It is finally here. I have been waiting for weeks and it finally got here. My camera is back. You're welcome, Canon. Oh, oh. Oh, thank goodness the thing is back. Now that I have my camera back and life makes sense again, I can answer some of the questions that people have been asking over the last few weeks. I've gotten a handful on Facebook and a handful on email. And the biggest one actually was about the stuff that is in the background when I'm filming downstairs here. So I've talked a little bit about how the fast is coming up and how in this coming week, we have three people sitting out in the woods in a little circle for four days. It's part of a vision quest. It's a traditional indigenous ceremony and lots and lots of people have done it over lots and lots of time. This is our eighth year of doing it where we do it. As part of doing that, a lot of times I get gifts from either people who are fasting or sometimes from other Aboriginal folks that I work with. So in the background is a bunch of things like up there, I think, yeah, up there is some furs. Down there, there's some shells and things. Upstairs, I have bone sitting in peroxide right now. It's not for dinner or anything, and it's totally legal, legal-ish. Pretty legal? I got it from an indigenous person who got it in a legal way and gave it to me in a legal way, so I think that makes it legal. This area is kind of gray. Anyway, what happens every year is we get all these things together, and then throughout the year, I make crafts out of them, either to give to people who are fasting, like this year I have gifts for them. They're over there off camera. You can't see them yet. Make sure you can note you can't see them yet. Lots of them watch this vlog. But then also I give a bunch away to other elders or to different ceremonies. And I know for some people, the whole idea of using animal products for things or wearing furs or having them can be kind of a touchy issue. And I get it, I really, really do. See, I actually come from a family that hunted, but for meat, it was a way that we sustained ourselves. And for a lot of people, the whole idea of hunting for anything but the specific purpose of feeding your family just seems completely wrong. And you know, there is to an extent, I get it. I never managed to go out hunting at all. I just couldn't really do it. I would help prepare it and everything. I mean, I ate it, so I would kind of need to. It seemed hypocritical not to. But I never went hunting for any sort of trophy animals or anything else, never did that. But most of the stuff, if not all of the stuff that I have back there is actually harvested in really good ways. In some cases, some of the things that are up there actually went to families that ate the meat and it kept them alive. And then with the rest of it, they gave them for ceremonial use. For some of the things, like most of the bird parts that I have, especially the eagle parts, they actually came from animals that had already passed away for various reasons and were then being used for ceremony in a good way. I tell you, when eagles get passed on in indigenous communities, it's a big deal. The feasting of the eagles that happens out in North Vancouver, if you ever get a chance to be a part of that, it is unreal. Like you're feeding entire full salmon to the eagles that are flying down out of the bushes and catching it. And it's, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely mind blowing to experience. The turtle shells I know were from a turtle that had actually passed away and it was a family friend and they wanted it to continue to be something really beautiful. So they gave me the shell so I could turn it into a rattle or something for ceremony. And that's pretty much everything that's up there. In some way it was used in a good way. For me, the part that matters and the part that I can kind of be responsible for is how what's left is used and is it used in a good way. All of the things that I make, all of the crafts I put together are given to people so that they can gain health and healing. And in a lot of ways, there's that, in a lot of ways, there's this teaching that the spirit of the animal that imbues the thing that you made with it actually helps the person move on and, and gain the things that they need out of life. And the fact that I can be a part of that, that I can make that is, is really cool to me. I really love that part of it. I don't know if there's any indigenous folks beyond the people that I know directly that watch these videos, but if there is, I want to know your thoughts about it. What does it mean to you when someone makes medicine for you, makes that thing that was once an animal into this beautiful sort of ceremonial object? If you're not indigenous, you can totally answer too. It's just that specifically where my brain's at getting ready for the fast and thinking about that. I'm going to turn this off now. I need to finish these things for the fasters that's in like three or four days or something and that they need to get done. Even starving people need their presence.
Now that I have my camera back and everything seems to be working, I can start obsessing about my next project, which is finding a better spot to film inside the house. Not really feeling the downstairs, I mean it's fine, but I'd like a little more of a concerted sort of studio space. I would love to have a space all to myself, but I live in a house with other people, so that's probably not gonna happen anytime soon. I'm gonna have to get creative. But that can wait till tomorrow. When you're this far north, right around this time of year, the sun doesn't fully ever go down, so it is 11 o'clock at night. I'm gonna take advantage of that, go for a walk, watch the moon come up while the sun is still up. There you go, just peeking right up there. That's the moon. This place ain't so bad.